Even the low S Max offers a lot of space in the cabin, and the longer and taller Galaxy even more so. Most cars were sold as a seven seater, but five seater S Maxes are still not uncommon. Separate seats in the second row have individual adjustments, and the proprietary fold flat system ensures a flat floor when folding the seats of both rear rows. Over time, crickets appear in the interior and the silver paint on the front panel quickly wears off. But the upholstery holds up well, the functional equipment is generally durable. However, it is better to check the operation of the air conditioning on an old car the system's compressor is considered not very durable. But these are all minor things. The condition of the body is much more important, and there are questions about this. The paintwork's resistance to minor mechanical impacts is average, chips appear quickly, and metal in traditionally vulnerable areas, the leading edges of the hood and roof, rear arches, sills, quickly, blooms. What's worse is that rust also appears on the bottom, on the power elements, even on the latest copies. In general, these minivans begin to rust quite early, they do it quickly, and fixing these body problems, especially in hidden places, along power elements, at seams, is difficult and expensive. Galaxy provides this opportunity in the case of gasoline engines. Thus, the line included both simple naturally aspirated engines and more complex forced turbo engines. Moreover, if the 2.3-liter, veteran, 160 horsepower, was offered only before restyling, then the 2.0-liter, 145 horsepower, was available for almost all years of the model's production. I have good news for you. Now, if you are planning to buy a used car or learn more about your car, you no longer need to search for the information you need on the internet. We have collected everything in one place for you on the website carmi.pro. Here you can find out everything about the car, what brakes and at what mileage, any problems with engines, chassis or gearboxes, which trim levels are better not to mess with and how not to lose money buying a used car. You will learn all this on carm.pro. The 2.0-liter Duratec, based on the Mazda MZR, is well known from the company's other models, such as the Focus 2 and Mondeo 4. It has a decent lifespan, a long-lasting chain drive and no really serious problems. But there are enough small ones. For example, ignition coils that are not the most durable, it's better not to skimp on spark plugs and replacement times, a throttle valve that clogs quite quickly and also a not very durable damper in the intake manifold. Oil leaks also occur, and with age, the fuel system also. Mopes. With mileage over 150,000 kilometers, the oil scraper rings begin to become stuck, which increases oil consumption due to waste. The problem can be prevented by reducing service intervals and flushing the oil system, but further actions depend on the scale of the problem. In principle, the same applies to the 2.3-liter engine. In passing, we note that it is better suited for a heavy minivan, but its fuel consumption is higher. However, the 2.5-liter turbo engine, essentially a Volvo B5254 T3, is even more voracious, and with age it requires more attention to the turbine, the crankcase ventilation system, and the cooling system. This is the price to pay for the fun driving character of the 220 horsepower unit, which was installed only on the S-Max of the first phase. But there are few such cars on the market, and they are not for everyone. After restyling, Galaxy and S-Max received turbo engines of the EcoBoost family with a volume of 1.6 liters, 160 horsepower, and 2.0 liters, 203 and 240 horsepower. They were created on the basis of the old, aspirated, engines, but they generally have a more complex design, a high degree of boost, direct fuel injection, and at the beginning of their careers they also had a number of childhood diseases that took the manufacturer some time to eliminate. As with all direct injection engines, the intake valves on EcoBoost engines become clogged with deposits over time. And these engines do not have hydraulic compensators so periodic checking and adjustment of the thermal clearances of the valves is required. And while the 2.0-liter unit has a fairly durable timing chain in the timing drive, 
The 1.6-liter has a belt that requires more frequent replacement. The main problem with the 1.6-liter turbo engine is the risk of overheating due to malfunctions of the complex cooling system, especially on cars before 2013. In this case, the consequences can be severe, including deformation of the aluminum block. This is partly also a consequence of the open deck design, it also provokes the rise of the cylinder head gasket. The engine does not seem to be the worst, the problems described above do not occur universally, but it requires care and control on the part of the owner. We recently spoke in detail about the 2.0 liter EcoBoost, but now we will repeat the main points. Early versions suffered from piston destruction, believed to be due to detonation, due to two, optimistic firmware. Just on the early European versions of this engine, the steel exhaust manifold cracks, and its fragments damaged the turbine. Some owners replaced this part with a Chinese-made cast iron one, and the manufacturer itself eventually switched to a manifold integrated into the cylinder head, but in the case of the Galaxy 2-S Max there will still be an old design. As we have already said, diesel versions are more popular on the Belarusian market. Before restyling, an 8-valve 1.8 TDCI engine, Enduradi, of our own production was used in versions with 100 and 125 horsepower. This engine does not have the best reputation, primarily due to the two delicate and not very reliable common rail fuel system manufactured by Delphi. Experts' opinions on the reasons may differ. Some say that the problem is the high demands of the system on the quality of the filters and diesel fuel used. Others blame the design features of Delphi, but the essence is the same. Old cars with this engine have a lot of problems, especially taking into account their age and runs. So, at a minimum, you should approach the purchase of this version with caution. After restyling, this engine replaced the 1.6 liter TDCI, 115 horsepower, and here we are already talking about the 8 valve PSA engine of the DV6 family. This is good news since this unit is considered reliable and durable, with a well-spread service base. It is clear that it is not ideal at all, in addition to traditional questions regarding the USR and particulate filter, oil leaks were noted, including through the heat exchanger, as well as problems with the turbine due to clogging of the oil supply system and incorrect operation of the geometry control system, and the age of most cars or approaches or exceeds 10 years. Nevertheless, this is a successful engine that can be safely recommended for purchase. It's just that it's a little weak for a mid-size minivan. Well, the line also included versions 2.0 TDCI, PSA DW10, with a power of 130 to 163 horsepower, and 2.2 TDCI, PSA DW12, for 175 to 200 horsepower. These units were updated in 2010, but from a reliability point of view this changes little. Early problems are usually associated with the operation of environmental systems, as well as with the failure of injectors due to unsuccessful refueling. Age-related problems are associated with the pressurization system. Also, the chain between the camshafts turned out to be not very durable. Yes, a combined timing drive is used here, belt plus chain. Most cars on the market are equipped with 5 and 6 speed manual transmissions. They are reliable and problem free, but it is worth considering the high cost of a dual mass flywheel, the service life of which usually rarely exceeds 150 to 170,000 kilometers. Before restyling, they installed a 6 speed Eisen automatic transmission, the reliability of which largely depends on service intervals. Everything is according to the classics where products from the friction lining of the torque converter lock quickly contaminate the oil, and if it is not updated at least promptly, and ideally more often, the valve body suffers. It's a similar story with the 6-speed, robot power shift. This name hides the 6DCT450 gearbox, which was used after restyling on 2.0-liter gasoline and diesel versions. Only with the amendment that in this case the clutch packs operating in oil were out, precisely those same, wet, clutches. Dirty oil eventually kills valve body solenoids and shaft bearings. In addition, it is worth keeping in mind that the models in question had early versions of such boxes, and they were noted for problems with mechatronics. 
In general, this robot requires careful diagnosis before purchase. There are McPherson struts at the front and a multi-link at the rear. The chassis is tuned well, offering a good balance of handling and ride quality. The service life of most suspension parts is at a decent level, but it seems that a lot depends on how fast the car is driven, especially on bad roads, and how heavily the owner loads the car. It is clear that stabilizer struts are consumables, but usually they can withstand 60 to 80,000 kilometers. Shock absorbers and springs, as well as ball joints, travel many times longer. Silent blocks should be considered relatively vulnerable suspension parts, and in the case of a rear multi-link, replacing them all around can cost good money. So, it is the resource of silent blocks on the Galaxy and S Max that is very different and varies greatly from machine to machine. Mechanics conclude that it's all a matter of how they are driven and how much they are carried. The steering rack is not considered the most durable component. On many cars it has been knocking for a long time. Sooner or later the matter ends with its restoration or replacement with a used part, which sooner or later will also probably knock. And on older cars, problems almost always arise with the handbrake and, in general, with the rear calipers. As a rule, the matter ends with replacing the cables and restoring the calipers. Otherwise, the brakes do not cause any particular problems. The combination of a naturally aspirated petrol engine and a manual gearbox reduces the risks of expensive repairs, and the 1.6-liter diesel looks good in terms of reliability. The main thing is to find a well-maintained copy. But all other engines are more complex, with more vulnerabilities and therefore more likely to costly repairs. The same applies to both automatic and robotic gearboxes. We are not discouraging these units, but simply warning that there are plenty of questions about them.